Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of the TB and J podcast. Across from me is Chris Carroll. Yes, Troy and Dee have fled the state, and police are in hot pursuit to bring them back to the studio so that way they can record next Monday. Absolutely, and we are not at liberty to say what they did, but you guys, you, you know what you did. You can fill in the blanks. Fill yeah. in the blanks. At this point, you know them. Troy and Dee have been canceled, okay? C- hashtag cancel culture, hashtag cancel Dee, hashtag cancel Troy. And instead, we've replaced them with... John Fizzwater! I'm sorry. Yay! Yay! I'm uncomfortable with positive attitudes. And my fiance Red's here. Hi, Red. Hi. I'm also sorry. Theme song. Ugh. Who's that guy? Guys, we watched Uncharted with Tom Holland and Marky Mark, and uh, fucking, it was a good movie. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Chris? Thumbs up. I had a fun time. Red, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. I'm not an avid movie watcher, but I did actually thoroughly enjoy this one. Fantastic. John, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, Three out of five pirate ships. That's not our gimmick. <laughs> there but were two pirate ships. Three enough. out of five. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. So for the record, uh, none of us have played Uncharted, which is probably why we which is which yeah. is why we probably liked it as yeah, much. Yeah, I think it's a, a huge factor. I mean, I didn't know that. I didn't know none of you played Uncharted. I assumed one of you played Uncharted. I assumed that Red had at least played Uncharted because she's been the PlayStation person in my life. I for have a while. watched one ex boyfriend play one Uncharted game for approximately thirty minutes. Okay, that's what I've got. That's what I'm laying on the table. And how's it? How, how's how's it compared to the movie? How accurate is it? Well, one of them did not have Tom Holland, so that was a strong determining factor. Yeah, fun fact, the movie didn't have Tom Holland. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, Tom Holland, a uh, real fucking great actor. Didn't um, show up at all. So <laughs> I, uh, I've i been reading a lot of reviews because that's what I do, because that's my job. What do the reviews say, Jeff? Uh, they're not great. Thank you for, for asking. For some fucking reason, a lot of major outlets seem to really not like this movie, and I have no idea why. Well, it's what top- the fuck do they know? It's topping the box office currently, but then again, that's, what yeah, else is yeah, out? Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like uh, uh, some of these and some of these fucking headlines are mean. Uh, Uncharted: Journey to the Center of My REM Cycle. Uh, what the fuck? Uncharted: <laughs> This is how you don't adapt a video game. It's uh, like probably the best video game adaptation. Tom Holland's star power can't keep Uncharted on the right course. I like. I don't. I, I don't didn't agree get, with any of those sentiments. I didn't get like like I'm not. Say, I don't know the game again, but like I. As a movie, this was a fine movie. Like, why are you hating on it so much? There were things in this movie that were, like, cheesy and ridiculous, but that's what you signed up for when you watch an adventure movie like this. The over-the-topness, I think, was good for it being a video game movie, but then there's also, I had issues with, like, the CG and stuff, but, like, overall, like, it was a fun movie, and I'm confused (laughs) on, like, the hate. There's a scene where they're, like, ascending... Uh, a stack of boxes that are falling out of a plane. That's a set piece from a game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, at some point. I was gonna, I was gonna mention that. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen that in a cutscene. There's in a video game. Yeah, for like, Uncharted. There's like, a, I watched the outside Xbox guys, and like, I've seen Uncharted like clips of that, and like, this is like, I've seen scenes from that in this movie. So I'm like, they're doing a good job accuracy wise. Yeah, yeah. They're the. I felt like an adequate adaptation. Everything I know about Uncharted is that Nathan Drake gets himself in trouble. I know Chloe's in it, and I know uh, fucking Victor's in it. And like they, they nobody trusts anybody. And there's backstabbing and treasure hunting and ridiculous fights and flying ships. And then you just Nathan Drake never seems to walk away with all of the treasure, but he does seem to always get away with it. And, and we move on to the next game. And he always makes like quips and like be funny. So, yeah, and that's, exactly. And, and he did that. Like, I, and Tom Holland had like great like charisma. Absolutely. I, I mean, that's just Tom Holland. Well, that's true. See, that's what? our thing, though. Like, our biggest advantage here that nobody in this podcast is going to sit here and fanboy about this game. because, like, for We're going to fanboy like, about Tom Holland. <laughs> Jeff will back me up here. Like, if they made a film of any kind based off of the Mass Effect series, I'd be up in arms 20 different ways. They, oh, 100%. Uh, you already know. You know that Amazon has the rights and they are working on a Mass Effect series, right? I'm aware, which is why I say that because I'm sure I'm going to end up in that podcast and I'm going to be on a soapbox for a large portion of it. But you that's and Chris, my thing. yeah. Like we'll we be, are viewing we'll be on this the same as team. a standalone project and not as you know a, a direct adaptation of something that we have grown up with or that we already know and love. Yeah, and like like I for mean, example, I mean, who would make Assassin's a, a shitty movie? adaptation about a video game? Mm. Halo. 
Is that Pikachu? <laughs> um, excuse okay, me. Like that Pikachu. movie was awesome. Me, John will fight you over I don't right care now. about. No, 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 I'm saying I, was, I, I, I loved it. It was fine, but there's no way I'd, I'm, I'd put that up for any awards or anything. Oh God, no, right, right. no, the, no. Uh, the CG, the fucking Pokemon in that are fucking gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, that might be award worthy. Actually, I'm not even kidding. Like when they talk about like realize like making Pokemon into CG, we're talking about Detective Pikachu too much. Anywho, <laughs> but that was like I was saying like um. Assassin's Creed came out, and I was bored the fuck, and I have a tattoo of Assassin's Creed on my goddamn body. That so, was Michael Fassbender, right? Yeah, and I was bored shitless from that movie. What part of your body? Right here. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, it's Assassin's Creed and Deadpool. Deadpool and Assassin's Creed put together, yeah. Weird that you don't have pants on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, like, overall, like, I think the, the concept I got to is from that, like, um, Assassin's Creed was boring as a fan of the series, so I guess not again as you were saying like not being a fan of the series or knowing the series like I I enjoyed it more. You're, you're able to view it more for like what the director wanted to do with the piece that he was working with rather than like the entire the lore the story the everything as a whole. Yeah, I literally went to the bartender as I was like going to get a beer, um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, no, she, and I said to her I was like it's just nice to watch a movie and not give a shit about lore but that's that's like a factor in like movies nowadays you have to know with a background of a movie it's all right imagine if i go to play uncharted one and i find out that victor sullivan's been dead for 40 years (laughs) that's one of the best and worst things he's actually just a zombie oh my i would would play the fuck out of that game (laughs) left for dead meets uncharted i think it more like left for charted i was gonna say you son of a bitch Mm. charted for dead left Mm. uncharted an accounting story (laughs) I was thinking more of Pir- you win. I was thinking more Pirates of actually. the Caribbean, where he's like a skeleton man. Oh, oh my god, yeah. And they did have the the galleon ships. In and this they also movie. called him uh, Jack Sparrow. He did make it Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Um, you guys mentioned a thing about like the director doing what he had to do. I want to make a point. This movie was made uh, directly by Sony and PlayStation. Like they directly had their hands in this movie. So it's not anything that the creators of this movie wouldn't have signed off on. Yeah, I think the factor in that it comes down to and this is like a big thing about like video game movies is that you're not you're not just like making a movie that for the video game fans, like even though they have a lot of them, you still want to make a movie for everyone. For the average viewer. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. have to adjust regardless of the story arc. You have to adjust to make sure that like this movie is for everybody that will come out to see it. And regardless, they know it. And, and not for nothing, we all went out to see it and we didn't know Uncharted. So I think mm-hmm. they did a good job with that. Exactly. Uh, it does go to say that... Uh, I mean, uh, we're also biased in that we have a podcast and we all think Tom Holland's fucking dreamy. Tom Holland is pretty fucking dreamy. Let's... Tom Holland in this movie is my dream. Like a fucking a bartender who's like really... Oh my God, they mentioned Negroni, my favorite goddamn cocktail, and I almost creamed myself. It was awesome. <laughs> I seriously... So that's what so that excited. moan in the theater was. <laughs> Uh, it, it does go to say that even though the cr- the current owners of Uncharted have their hands in this movie, Amy Hennig is the name of the lady who wrote Uncharted. She started the whole thing. Nathan Drake is hers. Uh, she no longer works for Naughty Dog, and she had no uh, affiliation with this movie whatsoever. I would say she well, also... Well, we should thank her anyway. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. She also... I, either thank her you, or somebody Amy else Hennig. had something to do with Last of Us, too. Like I think like the two... Games were similar. Somebody was intertwined inter- inter- with, 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 with words. Inter- uh, <laughs> intertwined, intertwined, intertwined with both of those. Oh my Is god! That right? I don't know. Victor Sullivan's a my clicker point. from Last of Us. <laughs> no, I'm saying not in the same universe, but like like the um, because they're both beautifully written stories. So I think Amy, I know, I thought was. Oh, you know what? I know what you know her from. She worked uh, in 1994. She was a designer for uh, Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. Yo. So there you go. Well, that was definitely what you know old, her from. That was That's awesome. definitely what you know her from. No, I know her from M- motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jack and the Power of Juju Three. I'm not gonna lie, I actually played that game. <laughs> Uh, or Battlefield Hardline. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I not kidding did, about Battlefield. Hardline. I actually did I play Hardline. One. Hardline, yeah, the cops and robbers shit. That was fucking awesome. Yo, woo woo! It's the sound of the police. It's like that song got stuck in my head perpetually. I think the world disagrees I with feel, you. I feel like we're getting <laughs> off topic. Yeah, we're definitely getting off topic. Um, Uncharted. Uncharted. It was a really fun action adventure movie. It reminded me of like when I was a kid watching Indiana Jones, except without the terrible Shia LaBeouf one and the Crystal Skull. They even make a um, reference to it's like it's yeah, always he said, nuns. Uh, well, uh, yeah. yeah, he says, uh, uh, "When did you decide you wanted to be Indiana Jones?" Well, that's not even that. It's, it's um, why is it nuns? It's always why nuns. is it always nuns? Which is why is it always snakes? 
from oh, Indiana oh, Jones. Oh, yeah. That is funny. Yeah. Speaking of cameos, N- uh, Nolan North was in this fucking movie. Uh, for the uninitiated, Nolan North is the voice of Nathan Drake in the games. Yes. Which, which is funny because I didn't get excited because he's the voice of Nathan Drake. I was like, that's Nolan North. I love Nolan North. That's all he's I also, had to he's tap also someone a on the cool shoulder day. and have it explained to me. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody around me was like, it's the guy. And I was like, it's some fucking old white man. Cool. That's kind of the thing. And fans were up in arms about Tom Holland being Nathan Drake because they were like, he's too young. Drake is supposed to be in his 30s. And he doesn't sound anything like Nolan North. And that's the problem you have with video game movies is that you go to cast somebody as this character who doesn't really exist. And fans are going to be up in arms one way or the other because it doesn't look like him or doesn't sound like him. And I feel like this putting... Why didn't they just hire Nathan Drake to do the part himself? I know, right? Why didn't they just fucking do that? Um, But sloppy. I I feel like having, having Nolan North in there to do a cameo was like a good way of like, hey, we see you. Sorry that we can't have him actually do the role because he's an older out of shape guy that can't actually be Nathan Drake but you know we see you fans here's your, here's your voice guy he's on a beach chair relaxing with all that Nathan Drake money he's got I yeah. mean they could have also sold it as a prequel actually I'm pretty sure it is a prequel I'm pretty sure yeah there's no way because it's the it's Nathan Drake's first adventure mm-hmm. uh, whether or not it's canonical with the the storyline they've built in the games I couldn't tell you but uh, who fucking I guess knows? I'll just have to go and buy Uncharted Collection yeah, I mean, like it came off like a, with the end of the, um, the like the post credit scene that it was like setting up for the games almost. Mm-hmm. So that's where I was saying like, that's probably where it's a prequel. But in, and then go back to Noel North concept. Um, he was the voice of Deadpool for like everything Deadpool related. When yeah, when voice. Deadpool was in uh the, the Deadpool game was Nolan North. I don't remember if he, he was, was in um animated... Marvel vs. Capcom and he was one of the animated. Yeah, he was the voice was he of Deadpool. When... Spectacular Spider Man voice. No, no, North? no, I don't think he was. I don't. No, 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 no. But the overall, though, he was like the first, one of the first voices of physically Deadpool having a voice, but outside of comics. So like, like having Ryan Reynolds take over the role, it's sort of like, sort of jarring because you're like, oh, I'm so used to Nolan North as a Deadpool fan, which comes back to the Uncharted thing. So I, I can see where that comes from. But again, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's also like, yeah, like Nolan North isn't built like Tom Holland, like the man's not mm-hmm. gonna do parkour. And the game is very parkour heavy from my understanding. Oh, extremely. Yeah. And there was parts of it where you saw him like fucking jumping over tables, like literally parkour and I from what I watch of parkour, he's like fucking nailing it. And you watch him do like uh power ups and shit like that, which are like parkour training concepts that are like awesome. So he's like they build his character to be like he's able to do these things and as much as I love Tom him, Holland's also able to do these exactly. things because he's a fucking acrobat. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. And he is, he is. He's the one reason why he's a great Spider Man, the reason why he's a great fucking um, Nathan Drake is like. He's, Have you seen his demo like real footage for Spider Man where he's acting out a scene with uh, Chris Evans for his audition and he flips onto the scene? Really? Yes. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's, he's literally, he used to be a gymnast and like he's built as a, like a, a U.S. fucking Olympic gymnast. Like, dude, he's not built like Peacekeeper. No, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah, exactly. Peacemaker. He's not Billy like Peacemaker. He's literally the opposite of Peacemaker. Not the opposite. I guess the opposite would... He's would lean. Be. Yeah, he's, he's lean. Yes, and but, not mean. But like I'm saying, like like those... But he is green. Those no, abilities and oh. like the way like you have the character like built in the beams, it's just one of those things where it's like you have to have like this guy basically do impossible stunts and he physically can do it like as a person. And I think it's impressive. I so, thought he does all of it. Yeah, he, he probably does. The man's fucking... God damn. A couple fun facts. So in this movie, uh, after Nathan Drake has grown up he, as a young adult, he's working as a bartender in this very, very upscale looking bar in New York City. Um, turns out that was all Tom Holland. He learned how to do all that by working shifts at the Chiltern Firehouse in okay. London. And he actually learned how to be a bartender and do all those tricks. I've never That's 100% been in, Tom I've Holland. I've never been in the same room with John and had his penis be this hard before. It's very strange for Yeah, because uh, for those of you that are longtime listeners of this podcast, you know that friend of the pod here, John, he's a big uh, recreational bartender. He does all his own drinks and cocktails here at home. And yeah, he should uh, do a podcast about that. Yeah, right? There has a name to it. I can't remember. Yeah, right? <laughs> Whatever. Um, but Shameless he plug. he fucking loved all the bartending tricks and all, all like 
And of course, John's favorite drink is the Negroni, and that's what the chi- he asks the the girl at the bar to order something more complicated. So she says Negroni, and Tom Holland gave this spiel about the first Negroni, and here's how it's made, and here's the best one. And I- I've never seen John with a bigger stupid smile on his face than in that moment. <laughs> I was like, I did that on the podcast. Um, no, but like on top of that, like um, like it's called flair, by the way. The all the flipping and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, like that's. That's it's a weird like middle ground in the bartending and whether or not that's cool or not. Like some bartenders are like, fuck that, that's over the top. But the other bartenders are like, fuck yes. And I'm like, fuck yes. It's like, not what the other bartenders think. It's what your patrons are gonna tip mm-hmm. you because they think you're cool as shit. Yeah, bottles and, and like and again, them. and the Gurney is also not a complicated drink, but like <laughs> it is my favorite. Um but like and the history, like making the drink with all the flair while having telling the history, that's like the bartender dream, like right there. Like that's that's what I want to be, and I want to be Tom Holland so bad. Yeah, you're a little tall. Uh, oh yeah, that's what. You're not was English. A, I I barely speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I I meant from the Queensland. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm from Canada. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's canonical now. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> just forsake all that Irish heritage. Duh. Sure, you can hide it real well. Well, the beard's gone, so the uh, the orange hair's now gone. Mm, mm. What about the hair <laughs> also, on your head. This it's movie. Blonde. This movie has been stuck in development hell since 2008. Really? really? This movie was 14 years in the making. Jesus. Oh, shit. When this movie was well, in that original, case, it sucks. <laughs> so the original producer uh, wanted Mark Wahlberg to be Nathan Drake, oh, which ugh. I've heard this which, actually. Fourteen years ago, that might have worked. Yeah, and I've heard that actually. I, you now you bring this up. I've heard this before because that that casting was announced. And I'm sorry, I'm like actually, um, but that that was like a. I remember that being like praised. Like he was like a great casting for it. And I remember mm-hmm. this being like that was like five years ago, not like ten years ago though. That was like insane. So, yeah, and uh, people wanted Nathan Fillion to play Nathan Drake as well because he looks very similar to Drake. I yeah, can see it. And he's got the charisma to pull it off. Yeah. But he just wasn't uh, in the age or, I guess, no, body type. He's almost 50 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Nathan Fillion's pretty old. Yeah. And he was never, like, the, the lean, muscular guy in films. No, he was he was always the, the voice. He was I the think talker. if you paid him enough money, he'll fucking go to the gym and work Every, out for whatever role. Everyone. Have you ever seen any Disney movie ever? Like, they all were like, yeah, we're Fucking Chris Pratt, a great example. Man yeah. was literally like the fat, funny guy, and then like, oh yeah, we're casting you in a superhero movie. Oh, okay, well then I'm ripped. Yeah, uh, Kumail Aziz, uh, uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah. I said Aziz. I'm sorry because oh. I oh, mixed yeah. him up you with a different thing. funny comedian who's a minority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, the thing. oops, 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 oops. But this this game went th- uh, uh, this game this movie went through like a revolving door of like writers and directors for about eight nine years before they finally settled and figured out their team and got it under underway um but holy goddamn that's absolutely insane apparently uh how much money did this fucking movie cost yeah that, that's a great question how much money is it gonna make because like it needs it needs to fucking capitalize that allegedly the, the budget is only 120 million okay okay allegedly but like that doesn't count all the money you're putting into this behind the scenes right mm-hmm. that just counts like building the set paying the actors and the director and all that stuff, and I guess the computer generated. Then there's stuff. also like the the bonuses and all that other shit that has to come into play. Like there's a lot of that, that, that comes out of box office money though. That doesn't yeah, kind of budget. That's true. Yeah, okay. But that's just that's a lot of fucking money. And originally, uh, it's according to an interview with Mark Wahlberg uh, in 2010 with MTV. It was supposed to be MTV. him. He was Jesus supposed Christ. to be Nathan Drake with Robert De Niro playing his dad and Joe Pesci being the uncle. What the fuck? And that's a casting. Was Scorsese I... gonna fucking direct it? <laughs> Because uh, I'd watch the shit out of it. That's basically The Departed halfway through. Like, Apparently that was an idea that was like gaining a little bit of traction before it just got completely shut down. Because now I'm not going to lie, if Scorsese directed this fucking movie, that would have been fucking awesome. That wouldn't have been Uncharted. It would have been like Uncharted, and then you get Uncharted Part 2, which is like four hours long, and then you get Uncharted Part 3. Yeah, I'd watch that. <sighs> I mean, I didn't watch any of The Godfathers, but that's not the point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you still regard them highly, don't you? No, not at all. Yeah. I don't get it. I think Godfather I do lo- 2 is still like the number one reviewed movie on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Like, like num- highest rated, yeah. I'm more, I, I, I love topic ca- here, gentlemen. I, I, I love Casino. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I just like, want to I mean, that's, that's sort of the topic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, still, Scorsese directed this movie would have been cool. Like, have you seen Shutter Island? Uh, he no. He can do off, like, offbeat. I know everyone makes him out to be like the, the <laughs> mob guy, but... <laughs> What? I'm reading about this movie. Uh, principal photography began on March 16th near Berlin, Germany. Filming was shut down later that day <laughs> due to the coronavirus pandemic. They didn't what? even get a full Oof. day of work under their belts before they had to shut it down. 
Oh my god. You remember that thing that happened? Yeah, right? Uh production officially resumed in July of twenty twenty. Uh it didn't really wrap up until like October. Oh my gosh. And then the but, film didn't un- the film went under reshoots in July twenty twenty one. So this movie even was like a pain in the ass to get off the ground. It took fourteen years just to get it it's started. It's had a very troubled path. A very troubled which, path, which usually means a shit movie, but this wasn't shit. No, but it makes sense on the like uh, my my biggest complaint, my pretty much my only complaint is this overuse of CG. But it makes sense because like literally they probably had to like CG a bunch of shit mm. because I can't it have also, the actors play the roles unfortunately because of COVID. And shit it like also that. explains yeah. why I think like because normally whenever like Nathan Drake's doing his thing and then the big bad guy comes in to steal the gold out from under him, it's usually like an army. And this was like a dozen guys led by one dude yeah. or one chick, and like it, it seemed a little. Weird, but now that I'm learning, it was filmed in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic. That makes sense. You got to cut down actors. Yeah, and but what bothered me? Wait, which, that's which, just an assumption, by the way. No, that, I, no that's, that's not fact. That makes more accurate sense because of the the other issue I had with the movie, which was um when they were stealing the boats, they went from twelve people to like forty five people in a matter of a cut, which I think was because they did the reshoots. Mm, there mm. you go. <laughs> yeah, so they were like, oh, we have to do the reshoots, and now we have are able to have more people. Cause and now like, we can make it look bigger and cooler. Exactly. Because awesome. I'm like, you can't steal a fucking two boats with six people. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not how that works. Eh, steal is a weird word. They found them and were lifting them out. I don't think they that, were in the... They, it's they, a gray area. That's a gray area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll let the Philippines decide. Well, they own it now, so it's okay. They do, because yeah. it fell in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> if you're walking, if you're flying through the water and you drop something, it's no longer yours. It belongs to Philippines. I mean, they were stealing it from the Philippines. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, it's... yeah No, it's it's theft. We're, we're calling it theft. I mean, Magellan stole it first. Yeah, then... well, he also stole my heart. <laughs> <laughs> One thing uh, that I will point out that I really loved about this movie was that uh, 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 fucking she goes to try to pick a lock with, with a, a knife. knife. And I was getting really, really mad. <laughs> I know cause, because as soon as I that hate... happened because he's. He, I don't know if y'all know. Jeff is like an avid into lock picking as a hobby. As soon as he she opened that pocket knife and put it in that lock, I turned around to him and I'm like. Don't fucking say anything. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I I was very, I was gonna get very upset because no movie seems to fucking understand how lock picking works. Uh, they think you just shove a knife in a lock and wiggle it and it'll open. And then Tom Holland kicks the door open and well, I'm just like, okay, lock, thank you. You can do that. And it will pop open. Hey, you're learning stuff when I talk. It's just... I try to block you out most of the time, but you say things so repeatedly. It's just funny. He really that, does like, do that. He really does. It's, it's bad. It... It's bad. Mm. The funniest just, mm. it was just because I saw the knife come out, and I didn't even look at you. I was like, Jeff fucking hates this scene. <laughs> like I like just, how I felt when the bartending scene exactly, happened. Exactly. I, like, I was John loves this scene. Yeah, I was like, ah. Uh. But, like, yeah, it was, oh, my God. I saw the knife go in the fucking, the lock thing, and I was like, that's not, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm mad. I can't imagine what <laughs> you Jeff can't imagine. I'm like, furious. Yeah. Because that was a big fucking knife. It barely fit in the it, hole. I thought she was uh, at least going to get a hair clip and like put some tension on the top. There's no, something. She just, like, no, she just it stabs. Who really just stabs? Try to pop it open. So who just sticks a knife in? Come on. Yeah, you like, spit on it. Use protection for it. Yeah. I can hear <laughs> D yelling up. through his phone that we never talked about the plot. So I'll I'll graze over the plot because there's a lot of little things. Well, but I will say this much: like the plot in itself is sort of it's like, a Nathan Drake game. Yeah, it's it, literally like the they they this plot could easily be an Uncharted game. It very well might be, for all we know. None of us fucking played the games, and I know D and Troy haven't played either, so when you guys listen, go fuck yourselves. You can't yell at me for it, (laughs) uh, because you didn't do your homework either. D comes back next week like, I have played all the games! I don't think you guys know, but behind all the Transformers in my office, I have a PlayStation and a television, and I play Uncharted every time He couldn't hook up a television to a PlayStation, I don't think. Yeah, he would probably like call me and ask for help. (laughs) He's like, what's an HDMI? I don't understand. I had these three prongs. What fucking PlayStation do you My have? My controller stopped working. Where's where's the battery compartment? <laughs> All right, Jeff, I got you on Skype because I don't understand what you're doing. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna put the phone towards the wires and you tell me what goes in what. <laughs> is that uh, is that a CRT? <laughs> <laughs> D would absolutely be the kind of guy to hook up a fucking CRT. Uh, <laughs> have a CRT and try to hook a PlayStation to it. He's looking up like VGA. He's like putting the screws in. <laughs> like. This is not how this works. 
I just, I just, I just don't understand. I just don't know. I just don't know. Fucking, who cares? Just fuck it. Just fuck it. Dean, um, just sit down and have another drink. <laughs> honey, where's my bullet bourbon? <laughs> he does love the bullet. Um, I finished but, it. So Nathan Drake uh, gets separated from his brother Sam uh, early at the orphanage, and but but after telling his brother about the history of the Magellan Gold, because apparently Magellan found a bunch of gold in the Philippines but didn't bring it home, he instead faked his death, or maybe he did die. Who knows? Um, so Nathan grows up. Sam's nowhere to be found, hasn't heard from his brother in a decade, and then Mark Wahlberg shows up and says, Hi, my name's Victor Sullivan. You can call me Sully. I'm looking for the gold. You're gonna help me, because you're the little brother of Sam, and I used to know Sam. We're best buds. Look at this picture on my phone. And he was like, What? Like, yeah, let's do this. There was so, exactly a lot of, how the scene went. There really was. There was a lot of forced, like, like It felt like a little bit of forced exposition. <clears throat> yeah. But at the same time, like, I, I let it go, because yeah, cause the, the, the last thing I... I'm glad that they did because they really got the ball rolling yeah. fast. That's the thing. I, I really didn't want, want them to get the, the ball rolling. Yeah, like when they did the flashback, I was like, I don't fucking need a flashback. But like, yeah, like overall, like my biggest it, or like one of the things I was like, oh, they're just they're just explaining everything. But I'm like, all right, cool. Now I don't have to fucking give a shit. I understood back. who everybody in the scene was. Yeah. I understood their motivations and the plot of the movie within like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And that was perfect. That's what I want. And they built the characters pretty well. They, 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 they had their name up. tags. Yeah, they literally, <laughs> literally had their name tags and said, I don't trust. And that was every character. Yeah. And they, they, they started off really awesome by heisting a golden cross from an auction house. And it goes off terribly Nathan Drake can't fucking do a single goddamn thing right but he does actually manage to cause a distraction Wahlberg gets the cross we meet Wahlberg's ex-girlfriend whose name was Chris Chloe. no not Chloe the the oh uh Braddock sorry, Braddock Joe Braddock um Joe yeah yeah she was working with Antonio Banderas's character whose name was Mancata and House uh, of Mancata House of Mancata well that was like the that was their that was yeah, the name was of the family Bush. yeah which yeah. is that was the name of the same people. Yeah, um, they're the descendants. Yeah, Mancata, they're the descendants of the of Magellan's crew. So like, he believes he's entitled to Magellan's the... financiers. Yeah, financiers. They, excuse yep. me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for paying more attention yeah, than I did. Because Spain couldn't afford. Or no, was it Spain? Yeah, yeah the, the king of Spain could, was Bar not going Bar to finance. Barcelona the, is in Spain. The king. Yeah, I don't know that. And you know, <laughs> it, it rains on the plains in in Spain. So the king of Spain was not going to finance the exposition because it was very very expensive. And then a private financer showed up and financed the trip and that is uh Moncada's family. Yeah. Um and uh we also learned that Moncada's father, the current head of the family, plans to give away the entire fortune because he says it is stained in blood. They don't deserve any of this money. They should get rid of it. And obviously the son uh, Santiago, played by Antonio Banderas, he ain't happy with that at all and he has fucking Joe Braddock here off his dad in the back seat of his own car. <laughs> <laughs> Good that, that timing. Whole thing felt very forced to me. It seemed like I don't know. Maybe I knew we all here. you knew it was coming as soon as uh, Santiago found out his dad was going to give away the fortune. I you knew it was coming. I knew he was going to off his dad. I, I knew the moment he dad. put on those I'm sunglasses about, like an asshole. I'm talking about his father wanting to give away the family fortune. Oh yeah. yeah. Just because like it's been stained in blood, it's not ours. Like you don't grow up in wealth like that and just be like. We probably shouldn't yeah, have he's like anymore. he's like, like seventy. Like he's like completely yep. unrealistic to me. He's like seventy. He's like you know what? I'm done being rich. <laughs> Though I do want to mention that the scene we were talking about in the bar, uh, the the distraction scene, yes, might be my favorite scene in the entire movie. Oh, later while there's treasure hunting. No, the the one where he's jumping on oh. the light, lights and shit. Oh like that. Yeah, 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 like where he's like turn off the power and like I really thought he was gonna turn off the power. That took a turn that I was like, this is fucking yeah. fun. He says like, turn off the power or something, and then I'm just like, well, something else is going to happen for but, sure. But it was like just fun. It was like so just. We also fun. met my favorite character in the whole fucking movie, the Scotsman, Stephen Waddington as yes. the Scotsman, whose name is just Scott. Yeah. Or at least that's all Joe Braddock ever called him. Beat but me up. he comes in with the thickest Scottish accent and says something. And then uh, Tom Holland's like, I literally don't understand what you just <laughs> said. <laughs> like that whole thing, like like from that point, like on like the, the whole like uh, uh, bidding scene. Like I just, I loved it. And the fact he's like, well, fuck it. I don't have the money, but I'm gonna keep bidding to make this guy Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was going back and forth. He was like, I need to keep this going. So I guess I'm just gonna keep bidding. Yeah, Two million, why not? Uh. And then like he jumps on the lights and he's like, what you, he's like, what are you gonna do now? He's like, well, you motherfuckers ain't coming at yeah, me. He, so. said, he said, you fat guys ain't gonna be able <laughs> yeah, to make exactly. it over here. So he's just hanging out on this light. <laughs> and I'm just like, that takes so much upper body strength. 
Oh yeah, Tom like, Holland this, has it. Yeah, Tom Holland again, definitely has gymnast, it. Gymnast, basically, uh, or no, almost U.S. Olympic level. But like, yeah, no. Overall, that, that took a couple jumps there. Yeah. But <laughs> all right, sure. But like, also, overall, he wouldn't compete for the U.S. He'd compete for the U.K. Oh, fuck, he does have an accent. Tom Holland um, is British. The second Spider-Man would be British. Um, but yeah, no, overall, like he's he's just. What's up with Brits being good at doing New York's New, New Yorkers? Well, he was doing Boston this one. It's the yeah. pent-up anger and you also, have from being British. Else notice, put also, it also, to be a New Yorker. <laughs> New Yorkers are just angry at everything. Did They're you nice notice? people. Also, foreign people are a lot better at our accents than we are at theirs. Oh, absolutely. We're fucking terrible. Yeah. It's because we're, we're so self-indulged that we refuse to actually pretend like we're going to... I don't know. Um, did you notice he had stuff in his mouth? Was that just me? His yeah, cheeks I, were popped out. That's like, a problem I usually have with Tom Holland. Whenever he's doing his American accent, it looks like he's got something like tucked away in his cheeks. Like yeah, a, like he has like some dip do... or like a... Like a crunchy you know, that was apple. The thing, especially when he, um, when he was trying to tell Sully like what actually happened to my brother. Like you have to tell me what happened to my brother. And like I really noticed in that scene, like if you even try to like if you try to like do a Boston accent really really quick and just do like coffee, like you're, you're pursing your lips, you're bringing it like you need to speak into the microphone, babe. I keep thinking you're doing that to get nope. me away from the mic. Nope. But but it's like if if you even were even to try to say anything in like a Boston accent like coffee, like you're you're bringing that very forward. Chowder. Like you're you're pursing Chowder. your lips. Like, because mm-hmm. that's just how that accent is presented. And, like, we don't even realize that we do that ourselves, especially mm-hmm. not because we're from Boston. But, like, he really exaggerates it because he has to try so hard to not only kill his own accent, but bring that forward in a realistic way. Sure, sure. That was, like, really especially prominent in that scene because he was trying so hard to kill the British accent on top of keeping that. And Boston it was also, accent. like, r- the camera was in his face. That yeah, and on too. top of that, he's and, also and he was, like, talking to Mark emotional. Wahlberg, who's from Boston. <laughs> well, yeah. Which I'm not even kidding. Like, he's, he's literally doing an accent with a guy from Boston so it's it's kind of hard to be like oh I don't want to be an asshole and insult you like this is like your accent it's Mark Wahlberg you can That's stand true. to insult him <laughs> yeah I'm sure Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch doesn't really give a shit anymore at this point in his life pretty sure he's pretty happy with how things even have gone even still though Tom Holland's a young actor or Wahlbergers Mark, that other thing he makes money yes, on yes but like Mark Wahlberg is probably like someone he may not look up to but has like some sort of like, hey, you're. He like, has connections. Exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. He's a bigger he's guy. He's been in the industry for a long yeah, while. Yeah, and you, you're a younger actor who just showed up in the scene, so you don't want to insult a man that you're like, hey, so you're gonna try your hardest to do the best version of an accent of a guy who lives in his hometown. So, I yeah, think that all becomes like prominent in front yep. where you're like, I need to perfect this, and then that's what I was saying. Like, what it comes down to is like physical. Like, I saw it personally. I, you're saying like, like the with the I saw it the cheeks mostly. Yeah. 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 But uh uh so Mar uh sorry, Sully manages to get the cross and he escapes, but Joe stops him and then the guards from the auction house come in and he's just like, Oh, thank god you boys arrived. She was trying to steal the cross, let me just go deliver it. And then she fucking just takes all three of those guards out and murders them with that little like talon knife she has. Also, I kinda can't believe that worked. Yeah, I was kind of like it's shocked. Like, I'm as in well. a uniform. I'm supposed to be here. I'm just gonna go. And I like, mean, okay. honestly, uh, I, it's very I, refreshing. Yeah, that actually, that yeah. actually works. Yeah, like they was like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna go. Bye. And everyone's like, like, I was waiting for somebody to like follow him. I was like, oh shit. You'd You're be surprised right what wearing the right uniform will do if you ever just walk with confidence. Oh, yeah, no, That's why I walk right. as a cop all the time. Like you could probably sneak into any concert <laughs> if you just dress in like all blacks and you carry a ladder. And you're just like, hey, I'm here for the thing. And they're just like, yep, go on in. I mean, you can just walk into any place if you have a ladder. It's like you can go <laughs> into yeah, like, any don't construction stop zone yeah. with like a hard hat. I'm just like carrying ladders. Any construction zone, just put a hard hat, steel toes, and a vest on and just walk in and you'll be fine. They will look at your feet. If you're wearing Nikes, they will stop you. They're like, no, 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 no. There's no way you belong here. And if you have a uh, barcode on the back of your neck, no one will care. <laughs> is, that a, is that a hitman reference? Yes. Hitman reference. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. But they get they get the cross and they go to Barcelona where they meet up with Chloe. Chloe is from the games as well. Uh, and I feel like this casting was fucking phenomenal. She looked exactly like I've seen her in the in the trailers and what little Uncharted I have seen. So who is she in real life? Yeah, because I've recognized her as a person. Uh, her name I, is Sophia Ali or Sophia um, Ali. Was she in the Aladdin remake? Uh, is that racist? Sounds that racist? No. <laughs> she that, was that in the Bloomhouse. She, <laughs> uh, she was in the Bloomhouse film Truth or Dare. She was in Uncharted. She was in. Who was Truth or Dare? I saw her face before. I think it might be Truth or Dare because I've seen the trailer for that a couple times. Which was she was in CSI Miami a couple times. There's a good chance I may have seen her in that. She was on um, Grey's Anatomy for a couple years. Oh, I love Grey's Anatomy, so that's definitely it. She was in the Mindy Project. I actually. Th- Watched one episode of the mini project and it was actually pretty funny. It seems like she had like just like little roles here and, and there. Next, you're gonna tell me that you saw Uncharted. Uncharted. 
Which he's starred in. What the fuck's a chart it? Oh. <laughs> um, no. Dude, she's literally the same age as uh, me and Troy. No, Born she... November 7th, 1995. Wow. I am old. Wow, look how much farther she is in life than you guys. I'm old. <sighs> Thanks. I mean, we could say that about Tom Holland as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's young. We very well could. Um, also, she started acting when she was eight. Okay, she got a leg up on me. L- mm-hmm. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Anyway, they meet Chloe. Chloe steals the cross from Nathan. They're, they have this huge chase across the fucking rooftops. And I think fucking, that might be my favorite scene. There's a great scene because, like, uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, he finally catches up, and uh, Nathan's like, Where, what took you so long? And he's like, I got a bad ankle. You think I can run across these rooftops? They got so many little jabs in there about just Sully being old, and it's just fucking hilarious, and I love how well it plays. And it would not have played as well if this movie was made 14 years ago mm. when Mark Wahlberg was supposed to be Nathan Drake. So I'm, uh, it seems... It, it worked out for the better in this case. I think the tone of the movie would have been different because, like, this movie, I mean, like, the tone of movies in general have changed so much that, like, I think this yeah. this wouldn't have been a marketable concept, like, this sort of comedy action concept. Yeah. Comedy action so big right now. Um, I didn't see that scene because I was taking a pee. Mm. Yeah. So that sounds like a fun scene. I apparently missed out. Well, there's a funny scene where... Uh... Where Nathan like goes over a, a railing, screams "Oh shit!" as he misjudges a jump and has to like he like do tucks a tuck and, and rolls. Roll. Yeah, really? yeah. <laughs> I'm sad now. It's really really funny. Um, but uh, they they finally agree that they're gonna work together on this thing. They have the crosses. They're gonna go to this church in Barcelona. They explore the church. They figure out where the keys go. It's all this awesome like national treasure, Indiana Jones bullshit. You got to find the hidden messages well, and the Latin writings and all this nonsense. You say that. There's what? literally a picture of a tree yeah. in, in, in the book, and they didn't think, like, oh, this is probably a symbol, not an actual fucking tree. And then they go to the church, and there's literally its symbol is a fucking tree that looks exactly like the book. No, yeah. that, that part was a hard for me to believe. My, my, I think well, overall... I, 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 it was hard to believe a little bit, but... I understand it necessitated Nathan Drake being part of the team because neither of the other two could do it on their own. So they needed to work together to figure this out. I think my other complaint with the the movie was um like these like mysteries and like the the tests and stuff. Everything just seemed so like obvious. Like I was like, oh, this is how they have to figure it out. Like the when they had to open the door and the heaven the hell thing. I like it was like, I thought it was immediately obvious that somebody had to open the door from the top to use the bottom. Mm-hmm. And just overall, like I thought it was like, I don't feel like I'm suspended or I'm in enough suspense when they're in trouble. Like I enjoyed the heistiness of it, but it wasn't like a heist movie or a treasure hunting movie enough because I'm like, I should be more like, how do we figure this out? But every time I'm like, Oh yeah, that's how you figure it out. Like, that's See, not... a lot of this whole collection of scenes, I don't know if anybody, like, I, I think I'm the only person that has a PlayStation, but if anybody you played the reboot of Tomb Raider, like, the I entire have. game played that way. Do you know, do you know, you probably know exactly what I mean then. Cause, like, I played the one that came out in 2013, the you, first one. You'll be playing something, and, like, something will happen, and be like, oh, that means this. That's that's why it's happening that way. Like, just whatever it was in the moment. And then, like, literally, like, four played, uh, four hours of playtime later, you'll hear Laura be like, oh my god, that's what it is. And you're like, no oh shit, God, bitch. But like, you're you're so far ahead of. Like- so, that's a very valid criticism that the Uncharted games, Tomb Raider games, and funny enough, Batman games all have in common is that it feels like all these things in the real world would be harder to figure out. But as you're playing through those games, it feels dumbed down because as the creator of the of the media, you want the player to figure it out and feel like Batman or yeah, Laura so Croft or Nathan Drake. It, it's actually a bit of dramatic irony because we, as the audience, get far more information than the character would ever get that's also yeah. true and i mean i also like, like I, we see like all the mechanisms that they can't see well before they ever notice it yes and right. plus that you're i know we also have to factor in that like the characters themselves are in some manner of survival mode through all of these like through the like laura croft doesn't even need to be explained especially in the reboot she's like literally fighting for her life for the entire time she doesn't really have the time so to sit much. down and be like all right let's uh let's let's sherlock holmes through this shit like we we have that opportunity that she does not so it's mm-hmm. going to be the same thing here Right, and that's that's exactly adrenaline's a hell of a drug. Adrenaline is a hell of a drug, and it does give you that tunnel vision of like you don't always see everything, and it, they're focusing too much on the problem at hand that they sometimes forget the stuff they already know. I know you're trying to make a point, John. What's up? No, you're fine. I just okay. wanted to bring up the the all of this that actually makes one of the greatest jokes in the movie. I think because of all of this was he's like, yeah, this is an arrow that goes says this way. I'm like, well, this is the eye of whatever, and like this is why we should follow it this way. He's like, 
this is an arrow that says go this way. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. follow the arrow, and then like <laughs> the spikes come out. Yeah. So that might be my favorite joke of the entire fucking movie. But it also goes back to the fact of like you're almost poking fun of the concept of the obvious is now mm-hmm. in your face. Now you're like, well, wait a minute, not always it's the obvious. Yeah, and that's that. That's fine. I didn't. F- I I felt that it, it it paced itself pretty well for the treasure hunting stuff, and it was, it it. <laughs> It made me feel like I was playing through a game. It made me feel like I, I was... Makes me want to play the figure- game. Yeah, I, it does make me want to play the game. I think I wanted more heist movie and less treasure hunt. I think that's what my issue was. But Nathan Drake is that, a heist. That's all I know, but that's... Is. I think... I, I know, but that, that thing, my brain was, like, wanting more, like, uh, twists and turns. And for some reason, like, that's sort of where I was like, oh, I wanted it to be, like, more clever. But in reality, it's it like is... like Indiana Jones and James Bond adopted Tom Holland. Yeah, like, and then that's... And that's once you, I got into it, the flow, I was like, okay, I, I get it. Yeah, I, I can get into this movie. It yeah, just, I, I enjoyed the movie regardless, but it was just one of those moments where I was like, "Oh, that was obvious," but I was like, "I wanted it to be like twisty and fun." And I was like, but yeah. "It doesn't need to be." Like the real reward is speaking like, of twist. We get to a twist after they make it all the way to the end of the the treasure map or the the I'm sorry the, the caverns that they followed under Barcelona. They find these giant urns full of salt and uh, they break, and uh, uh, Nate's going through the salt and he finds a map and Chloe pulls a gun on him and demands the map. I was expecting. He was pretty bodies. salty about that, by the way. Boom. <laughs> so uh, I, was, I, was, I was expecting preserved bodies in the in the salt. Because I mean, the, the urns are oddly human sized. Yeah, it was awfully large urns of salt just to hide a single map. So my thought on the salt, honestly, was like, oh, I didn't realize it was salt. Well, when they acknowledged it was salt, I was like, was salt expensive at one point? It was. The spices were, so I was like... Worth your weight in salt was literally a phrase that was commonly used yeah, at one point. Yeah, so that's why I was like, oh, they just, they thought it was gold, but in reality it was just salt. It's, it's like, as expensive as gold. Yeah, and like just they say with the uh, the cloves later. It's, mm-hmm. it's just one of those things where I was like, oh, that's just, they got they're dumbasses because they didn't realize like hey fun fact this shit's worth like a bunch of money it's not worth anything anywhere yeah so that's where my head was which was super flaccid and boring of an of a end result so I'm glad that it wasn't what it was I was like oh this is getting the movie they found salt well I, I looked at my watch and realized there's no way this is the end of the movie it's only been like 45 40 minutes I just my, I, my head was just I thought they would have to find a whole like they did obviously but like my head wasn't like we're gonna find a map here I really was just like oh Salt. That's it. That's the end of this <laughs> this this journey. They have to find new journey now. Um, but yeah, so so Chloe pulls the gun, knocks him out, and then uh, Sully comes down, and that's when they have their big like confrontation moment. So Sully comes down, and they have their little heart to heart, where he does eventually tell Nate, like, "Listen, your brother and I used to work together, but he got shot by Braddock, and uh, he's dead." Uh, and Nate's just like, you left him behind? And he was like, well, yeah, what was I supposed to do? Also get shot? And and for once, I was kind of on his side. I was like, yeah, that's kind of the smart play. You don't stick around and also die. You you leave at that point. Like, I get it. Don't leave a man behind. But at the same time, if you're outnumbered and outgunned, what what, what, what do you want me to do, kid? You really want me to die, too? Like, what, what what's that supposed to do? I like that they made him that selfish guy the entire time, and he mm-hmm. owned it. That was an awesome character concept. Like, he was just like, yeah. I just want the gold. Like, like, like that was his whole character, and I kind of fucking loved it. I mean, and then it obviously pays off in the end with his whole like with yeah, his, like art, his little redemption. Yeah, at the end. but I just still love the idea of just him being like, yeah, I just want the fucking gold. He's literally like, you just used me. I was like, yeah, I just used you. I wanted the gold. Like, yeah, did your brother it, tell you? Anything? Yeah, yeah, like that exactly that line. I was did like, did you that, really just ask me that? Yeah, yeah, like I, I love that. Like I was just like, that's exactly What's the problem. Yeah, like his. It wasn't like a oh, he's like kind of a nice person. He just straight up was like, no, I'm just doing this for this exact reason. Like, and I just needed you to help me. <laughs> like, yeah, but then uh, so Nate kind of says like, listen, we're gonna finish what uh, my brother started, and then we're done. We're n- I'm never gonna see you again. It's like the the falling out that always happens between the buddies. You yeah, know, the, that um, always happens in every film. The argument on the third act or whatever it is. Second act. Oh uh, yeah, and the third the, act is the reconciliation. Yeah. Um, so they they split up for a bit and uh, but they, they don't split up actually they they follow Chloe who is actually working for the bad guys the whole time the Antonio Banderas's character you have a button for this <laughs> ah it's crazy right and there's tension between her and Braddock because Banderas likes her more than Braddock because she's getting results and Braddock isn't and it's a mess. Also, who brings along their fucking Mercedes to a f- the Philippines Islands looking for treasure? Well, he calls it his lucky charm. Yeah, how fucking rich and butt pampered do you have to be to have a car that is your lucky charm? Well, he just inherited a massive fortune. 
Sure. Murder. But again, why are you bringing a car? Ah! Just get like a keychain version or a Hot Wheels or a Lego set or something. A Lego Mercedes set. I'm in. Yeah, those exist, buddy. He brings around his Lego Death Star. (laughs) (laughs) It's a callback to Spider-Man. I I get it. It's funny. Um, But they're they're, they're loading a cargo plane to go to the island and the map, which is where the gold is. And... uh, Oh, and also in in the storytelling of this movie, it starts with like the third act of the movie where he gets like yeah, they do that he's thing dangling where, out of a plane. Yeah, he's dangling then, out of a plane on a cargo. And they box. do a, actually cinematography wise, they do a great job of like like sort of like spinning going it. from that to the, yeah, yeah, like they do a really good cut. It's like a, a a great edit. I can't really explain it, but um, and then they bring you back. Like you know how they do. Um, <laughs> great job, <laughs> movie John. magic. This yeah. is why you're not a regular on the movie hey, podcast. That's pretty good. I will say I have I'm like deathly afraid of heights. So that whole thing of them like falling and and the camera started to spiral and everything. Like I had to look away for the screen for a second because I got such violent vertigo. vertigo for a second. I was like I can't do this. <laughs> it was uh, and the place goes vertigo. No, just you. No, 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 just you. Just, just, you, just you. All right, my bad. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, kill you me. pout. Let's go kill myself. Yeah. That. So they're on the cargo plane, and then Braddock betrays uh, her boss, Antonio Banderas. She slits his fucking throat and says, your father was right. You're not worthy of the fortune. And it's just like, oh, so oh. now who gets all the money? Like, all the men just kind of start following her. And I was like, that's weird, unless you were all also in on it from the beginning. Yeah, like... There's your heist movie twist. Yeah, well, but on top of that, like, the actual, like, rep... Like, the rep... The, rep- the fucking things that happen. Um, the, the repercussions. The repercussions of the... The, all the murders, like they kill the the fucking dad, and everyone's just like the dad's dead, and no one talks about it. Like, and then the 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 fucking Antonio Banderas is dead, and it's like, and no one talks about it. This is like huge financial like god in the fucking Sp- in Spain. So it's like, this is bigger news than this entire heist. I think honestly. the assumption is that the son and anybody else in here has so much fucking money to play with that they can just sweep it under the rug. At first. That's true. I also think. Like, it, oh no, my dad's 85 and clearly just died in his sleep in the back of a car. Yeah, with, with also, a the, the, from, a, from a sudden slit throat. Yeah. The time of this movie from like Nathan Drake waking up in the first day to the last day of them like leaving and with the gold. It's incredibly it's, condensed. It's within a week. Yeah. Like, it's only a couple days. Like, even like, if the cops found the dad and you, launched her investigation. You don't have the time for the financial or political fallout involved in the actions happening. Exactly. But at the same time, that's going to happen. And, like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's if, a weird. It's just for me overall. Like, we're talking about it. They made this house of, uh, I can't remember the name. House of, uh. uh sorry, yeah. with an M. Um, I, Mankata. Yeah. Uh, Mankata. Yeah. House of the Rising Sun, yeah. They made these guys mm. be such a, like, a huge political figure. They're that, oligarchs. Like, that you, ha- you killed off the two head guys immediately. And you're like, nothing's going to happen? Well, to be fair, the dad died and then the son took over. We don't know what happened uh, publicly with that. He may have just said my father passed in his sleep. He may just be saying, oh, my dad's out of town. I'm taking over for the time being. And everybody would accept that because he's the son, second in command. And the son, the son died on the plane in private. Nobody knew except the private security and Joe Braddock. But then they, the follow-up going to that being like, okay, but who is next in command? And again, we're talking about a very giant superpower base that's that was just one of my things obviously well, this doesn't matter because it's fucking the movie and we don't actually give a shit about this exactly but, but it's also led to believe he was operating rogue with this whole mission yeah like he wasn't mm-hmm. using the extent of like the actual i, I think and, the assumption at this point is everybody on that plane and everybody directly involved a is paid a shit ton of money to keep their mouth shut and only see what they're supposed to see and two is aware of the fact that if this shit gets pulled off they are facing an incredible amount of money for anybody involved so I think yeah, when everybody the was like, like okay, billion. you're in charge now, make this fucking happen or else we're all fucking screwed. And then yeah. my final rebuttal is that they're clearly setting up for a sequel. Um, they did that at the very end of the movie, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So they're clearly setting up for a sequel, which A, they're just sweeping everything under the rug because they're dead. Um, everyone on the plane was paid nothing because all the treasure got destroyed, basically. Oh, so everybody got claimed, claimed by the Philippines. By the Philippines. So this house that it was like the bad guy in this movie, like, how are they going to show up in the second one? That was my overall concept here. It was like these guys were a big fucking deal, and a bunch of shit happened to these guys in a matter of minutes. And I assume we're going with just oh, we for, we're, that they're dead, and that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, also like I don't again, I don't know the 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 game, which also comes around. Is like, are they that big of a deal in the game? Are they even relevant in the game? I just I was just like you murdered off the heads of this big fucking financial like god and 
You get fucking cut off like Hydra's heads and like there's nothing growing back. Like, mm-hmm. What the fuck's happening? <laughs> so that, that was my whole thing on that. Yeah. Um, it was certainly a little weird, but, uh, you know, fucking who, who cares? It happened so quickly yeah, and they just, and they just moved past it. I know, but I, I got hung up on it. It felt like yeah. one of those things where, like, that would happen in, like, a video game or a movie, and they're just like, yeah, this feels cheesy and forced, that's why we're gonna move past it real fucking fast. Yeah. And they do, they move past it real fast. Um, they made you focus on her right away after the murder, like, they, Right, yeah. and after the murder, Chloe decides this is a bad idea and tries to jump ship, and then she and Braddock are fighting on the plane. And uh, Nate and uh, Sully, who had smuggled themselves onto the plane, they're now escaping. And Nate fucking pulls the ripcord for the cargo, so all the cargo is flying out of the plane. It was a really awesome, like, fight scene kind of thing. And it it also, my my only gripe is that it does that thing that every video game does, where it's like, as soon as there's, like, a cinematic point in the plot, none of the main characters remember how to aim and fire. Yeah. So it's You're also like, rolling around in a really high wind exactly. velocity. I will say the Turbulence most is a bitch. The most yeah. video game point of the movie was that scene because I literally when he's climbing up the fucking like the the cargo. I swear to God, that's in an Uncharted yeah. game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to tap X like a bunch of times there mm-hmm. to try to climb that, and then occasionally have to hit it's the right quick, trigger. It's a quick time. It's a quick time event scene. Exactly, like verbatim. There's and, no way that isn't in an yeah, actual. And Uncharted like game. it's so well done that I felt it. I was like, "Where's my X button, man? This motherfucker needs to climb." <laughs> They could have yeah. had that on the screen. It wouldn't fucking <laughs> been out of place. Exactly. I would have saw it, but like, yes. And like every fucking seat pulls up an X button. Everybody else to hit it. Yeah. Also uh, here, even though it's such a small detail, I appreciated it. Because, you know, everybody's going bang, 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 bang. Like, I, I I thought, like, I literally thought in that moment, like, they're going to do this bullshit. Every action movie does where they have unlimited clips. And then right after I thought that, she's like, you're counting your bullets. You've only got one left. And I was like, I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate yeah, you. That was a good fucking bit. Yeah. That was good. You know who's apparently really good at that is David Leach, the guy who did, um... Uh, fucking David Leach. David Leach. Am I David, David Lynch? Lynch. Lynch. That's it. From Kane and Lynch. No. What? Oh, well, Kane and Lynch is a game that you brought up that just sparked my memory. But no, I was uh, the guy who directed um John Wick. Oh yeah 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 yeah. He um he I was, was like that, yeah. Kane and Lynch. I don't know. He was no. very very good at being, just be a ma- making you very aware of exactly where they were at in their clips because like um John Wick like go to fire a couple of clicks and just like throw guns in people's yeah faces, like grab and, guns off the it, floor. And, and, yeah, he was apparently like he counted bullets and he made sure that reloading was more realistic, which is a cool. It's like one of those minor details that you're like, yeah. oh or, or shit! Not, like, it brings consistency into yeah. the world. Fortnite. Exactly. It's like it's like oh shit! Like you hear that like kink, and you're like oh fuck yes, that's what I want to hear sometimes because it's like it's nice to be like oh you are a person and not having an unlimited magazine just feed mm-hmm. into you through magical filmography. I don't. I don't think you're right about David Lynch. Davy, it's not David Lynch. It's John's David, not right about most things. So this was a fair. Uh, it's David like L E I something. Who directed John Wick? Just look up that. Chad Stahelski. <laughs> that can't be right. No, David something. The guy he also directed De- uh, Deadpool two. Okay. Whoever directed Deadpool two then. They were both by the same guy. Yeah, he he took over after. He may have wrote John. David Leitch. That's it. Yeah, see, I was, which is what I first okay. said. David. Leitch. You said David Lynch, and I was like, no, I know no, that I said, name. No, he said David I thought he Leitch. was talking about David Lynch. I said David Leitch. Yeah, okay. or Leitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Wick, Deadpool two. He did nobody. Oh, yeah, man. that's yeah that guy. Yeah. He did Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. That makes sense. Because <laughs> Ryan Reynolds also did that. He was an executive producer for uh, Wick Chapter 2 and Wick Chapter 3. Okay, so he didn't do the sequels. He did the original. Yeah. Okay. But still, no, I, I uh, now that you said it, I do understand exactly what you mean. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It does add a little bit of realism to those action scenes, and I, 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 I do appreciate that. Yeah. Because and then her no. literally calling her out on it, be like, you weren't counting. They're like, it's just, it's Yeah, nice. you weren't counting. You've only got one left. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, shit, you're right. You only have one left. Which also kind of goes back to the other thing. Like, this is kind of like something that I like and something that I have a gripe with. They're a little inconsistent on um, showing the kind of, like, I don't want to say training, but, like, the kind of talent that these characters have. It's like Tom Holland clearly is, you know, like a, a con man to a point. Like, he's stealing Nathan bracelets Drake. off a or, Yeah, sorry. Um, he's, like, stealing bracelets off a woman's wrist, yada, yada, yada. But then, like, at the same time, there's scenes where, like, he disarms someone's gun like that. Like, he's yeah. got training for it. It's like, why do you know how to do that, and why did you do it so well? They didn't give him well? any, like, military background. Exactly. He was a bartender who worked out in his fucking apartment, who, by the way, that apartment was fucking gorgeous. Um, yeah, a bartender can't afford that apartment. He was yeah. clearly supplementing it by being a thief. Yeah, but then you have Chloe in the aircraft, who's clearly winging it. Like, they paid, paid attention. <laughs> I see what you fact- did there. Yeah. Um, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 they called her out on a, you know, she, she's shooting blindly now partly because everything's moving and everything like she, she she's firing blindly she's not she's winging it out. directly because she did used to work with sully 
they have a past. They've they've been partners in the past. But again, like we we don't. It's it's not clear what they are capable of in this respect, which is my thing. Which yeah. is also fine. I, I like a little bit of mystery with that because they do things like, oh, cool. I didn't know you could do that. And then maybe we'll learn how they can do that later. Or maybe they assume we've already played the games and know the story, and we know that between the ages of ten and twenty, Nathan Drake was. F- drafted physically into the Russian military and in a gulag or something and I learned how to do all these things. kidnapped and made into a child soldier for a couple years. I hope all this is accurate to the game. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Definitely not. Definitely <laughs> he not. He spent some years in Somalia. Yeah, but like, I, 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 yeah, he's he knows how to do some things. Or maybe he is just fucking winging it and he's doing the best he can to not die and get caught. Like, uh, who knows? I, I, but I, I didn't have a gripe with that, but I can understand why you do. It is a little weird to 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 just be like a a Superman kind of guy, even though you were a bartender and a small petty thief before this. So it does make sense, and I understand that gripe. And maybe that's the, a gripe that people have with the movie and why everybody's reviewing this thing so fucking poorly. Well, we should the, say that people aren't reviewing it badly. It's critics, critics are. Yeah. Critics are. It badly. Uh, critics are reviewing it poorly in a lot of the major media uh, outlets I looked at. But like, audience scores are like four or five out of five. Like, uh, audience scores are really high for this right now. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, I think their critics gave it like a two point five or like a two point two, something like that. It's like yeah. two and change. It was. It's. It's. It's doing poorly critically which oh, is strange yeah but it's doing numbers it's doing numbers and the audience is loving it and at the end of the day money's all that matters just fucking ask michael bay it's he doesn't venoming. give a shit if you like his movies or not he's making millions it's venoming doing? it's venom like venom critics fucking despise venom audiences love venom venom got a sequel that made a bunch of money too like no one wanted like venom was like fucking shat on hard so i remember yeah, so I'm hoping Uncharted does the same thing. Like, fuck you. Crit- I actually hope this whole concept of, like, credits being, like, fucking all powers on, like, whether or not a movie's good is fucking dead because of shit like this. Like, keep making movies that fucking piss off critics and make audiences love it. That's what I want more of. Because, like, is it fun? Did you have a good time watching it? Then fucking who gives a shit if it's a good movie or not being mm-hmm. a fucking bullshit concept of old white men? Like, fuck that. That's true. And I think that people are moving towards that mindset a lot more now, especially because people are caring less and less about things like Oscars and the Academy awards and shit and people give way less of a fuck about that stuff than they did five even five years ago or ten years ago so people are just making movies they want to make let's yeah, like, make sure that our entertainment is entertaining yeah yeah unlike this podcast which is literally the michael bay uh philosophy is like i don't give a shit what the critics say i want my movie to be fun and entertaining if d were here he would shit all over that concept because i know he fucking hates those transformer movies but they make money you can't argue with that Apparently, Bumblebee was really good. Actually, I've heard, I've never seen them because I don't like the Transformers either. But Who Bumblebee is apparently. Um, but then the other thing I also this movie I from again from only from my knowledge from outside Xbox or whatever is um, apparently the body count in those games and Uncharted games are insane. Oh, Nathan Drake's a fucking murderer. Yeah, and you see so many people die in this movie, which is like a lot of them from like getting kicked off ledges. And you're like that person had a family. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, there's a lot Peacemaker of Peacemaker shined a lamp on that in their fucking one of the episodes. It was like episode two or three when. Uh, uh, there was this one bodyguard and they had to kill him and he was like I, I have a wife I have two kids oh my god yeah. their names are this and this the guy that was playing uh, Buzz and uh, uh, Psych yeah it was that guard and then fucking Harcourt had to fucking shoot him and she was like why'd you do that and he was like better to make his last moments pain and suffering like, yeah they put no, a lamp on that it was dude, really funny it was, it was dark too. it was that dark was, yeah. as shit but also a very similar level. scene in like Grey's Anatomy because like they, they say like they being you know the experts, I suppose, in this situation. Like, if you are actually being held at gunpoint, that's the first thing you're supposed to do is humanize yourself. Like, I have a fiancé at home. I have a baby on the way. Whatever the hell you have to do or say to get out of that situation to make them double think what they're doing just for one split second is what you're supposed to do. And that actually separates the, like passion killer to a sociopath because you're not if you're a sociopath you don't fucking give a shit but if you're like a passion killer you're, you're there for a reason that yeah. that takes you down um to wrap up the plot of this movie because it's almost over um i say it's almost over we have it's like halfway at this point but it, it goes so fast yeah it does um i mean they were gonna play yeah so uh now nate and chloe are like teaming up and they wash ashore on the island and that's where we get nolan north's cameo where he's like you guys look like crap and Tom Holland's like, yeah, we just fell out of a plane and into a car, and then we landed into the ocean. And Nolan North says, I did something like that once. And I'm, I 
Karen fucking T. That's what cemented it for me. That that cargo plane scene is definitely in an Uncharted game because Nolan North says I did something like that. There's once. a good chance that scene was like the first thing they filmed, and then they just made a movie around it. <laughs> Very much because so, it's just how like video game it is. There's a good chance they're like, this is the scene that I want to make. This, this is the reason I want to make this movie is this scene from this game. And they opened with it. Yeah, like that's exactly what it is. I think the director, the writer, whoever, like, somebody I'm writing two hours of movie and filler just for an excuse. Just because I want to do the scene, thing. I really want to throw Tom Holland out of a plane. And like see I, if he makes it. Yeah, I really want to <laughs> do that. Can you guys pay me to do that? Like, I, I played this scene in this game, and I love it so much, I want to make a movie out of it. Fucking quitting everything. I'm making movies now. This is a shadow dream for Absolutely. eight years. But uh, they team up now, and they're uh, at some resort on the island just kind of f- trying to figure out clues. And that's when uh, Nate figures out that his brother's postcards over the last 10 years actually did have a hidden clue in there. You just had to reveal it with the lighter. Um which and they uh, foreshadowed in the beginning. Of the they movie. foreshadowed in the yeah. beginning because his brother left him like a hidden note that he had to reveal with fire. Um, but then it's like, oh, the, he pulls the crosses apart. They make a compass on a map and they point to a direction. And that's where the treasure is. Great. So he writes down the coordinates and then uh, he goes to wake up Chloe, but he decides to let her sleep. So then he goes to bed. Chloe wakes up, sees the coordinates, takes them and dips and leaves a little note like, I'm so sorry, Nate. I just had to do this. Can't trust anyone, blah, blah, blah. And Nate's just like, figures. Glad those were fake coordinates, and he pulls out the real ones that were like tucked in a bottle. So and I'm just like, satisfying. I was like, yes. You know how oh, to play fuck. the game now. Yes. I was like, thank you, Nate. Thank you. The moment he looked over to Chloe on the bed, I knew his plan. Yeah, it was great. It was like when he was like when he was writing it down, like you even like that's not the map that he had pulled up on his phone was not the same spot that he had centered on the old map. And I was mm. like, oh, he's totally gonna do this. <laughs> My boy pulled it off, and then he goes and finds the treasure, and uh, sure enough, waiting for him in the fucking boat is Sully. Sully's like, yeah, I've been here for a while. <laughs> yeah, because he had the uh, GPS open. Yeah, he followed him on his of the, phone. Yeah, he had yeah, too yeah. many open apps, which is a joke that you're like, I oh. always have too many open apps. Yeah, and yeah, because he, he, so earlier in the movie, he Which, are up, their phones completely waterproof then? Because like, God damn, I need to find Most, out. What, are they using HTCs, John? Oh, God. HTC actually was really big on waterproofing. But don't get me started on that. Cases. And also, most, yeah, life-proof cases, which is also made by OtterBox, same company. They actually com- they compete against each other. Well, this isn't an ad sponsor yeah, yeah, for OtterBox. No, sorry, yeah. um, so, we turned into the dying Radio Shack podcast. Yes. Yeah, no, fuck it, no. But, this um, podcast brought to you by Rage Saturday. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> That's exactly what... The, that was the company uh, motto. Fuck um, it? Yeah. <laughs> it was Radio Shack. Yeah, fuck, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, but, like, <laughs> the the whole bit was that, like, he made him, he's, like, earlier, he's, like, give me your phone. He's, like, you trust me. And he, he sets a GPS so that you can track. Tom, yeah, 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 yeah. So they can track, track Tom Holland. And, and then they, That's they how they navigated the Barcelona There's a bit. lot of, like, good callbacks from the beginning. They do a lot of foreshadowing. The continuities are, right? Yeah, this movie. yeah. It's, I, I respect that. Um, but then I got immediately Goonie vibes. I'm not sure you guys have seen the Goonies, but. I haven't, actually. You haven't. I but, haven't. Oh, my. Are you serious? Have you seen the Goonies? No. Oh, so you know what she hasn't seen the Goonies. You know what she has seen? The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, starring John Wayne. That's interesting. No. Um, you watched old John Wayne movies with your dad? Not that one. I dude, I it was just on the TV. It's because I had to be in the room socializing with my father, not because I was watching the movie, dude. Well, th- I guess I'm going to explain. But in the Goonies, they the whole point is they're finding uh, uh, one eye Willies. Goonies never say die. That's yes, that's their sl- slogan. But they bang a rang. The, oh, shut the fuck up. Um, they find One Eye Willie's like pirate ship and like underground in a cave. Exactly. One Eyed Willie. Yeah, One Eyed Willie. Are you serious? That's a penis joke. That's yeah. Well, that's the name of the pirate. What the fuck? Come Have on. You had not Is seen that a kids movie. movie? No, well, it's supposed to be. But it's it, the it 80s. better not be, or we need to call the cops. Well, it's the eighties, <laughs> so yeah, it's the eighties. Anything yeah. goes. The kids but are doing cocaine. The point behind is, the they set. go underground in a cave like they are in the fucking movie, and they find and the a ship. pirate ship. Yeah, yeah, and they go in the pirate ship and they find the gold. It's. It's so Goonies. It's so fucking Goonies. And I loved yeah. it. It was very nostalgic for me. Yeah, basically hidden away in a cave is Magellan's ships. And uh, all the gold is in there in the barrels. And uh, as soon as Sully and uh, Nate are like looking at all this, that's when Braddock shows up with uh, her squad. and uh, who, who just managed to spot uh, Nathan they, Drake Yeah, they saw going Nate on boat. driving by and they that, figured something was up. That was, I think this that was, part of the movie forward has the most problems for me. Because they were very selective, especially with anything that was old, about what was going to cause a problem, what wasn't going to cause a problem. It's like when they were walking through the catacombs and everything, trying to figure out the first part of the treasure hunting thing. You had all kinds of dust bunnies, cobwebs everywhere, except the main line that they were walking through. Like, you you would have been, like, walking through that. For, first of all, it would have taken you three hours, because you're tripping over to 80 billion things. It's going to be, like, a floor of, like, a foot high in dust. And you're just going to be like... Pfft, pfft. 
like trying to get like spider webs and shit out of your. You're gonna face. be like what, dear? Like, you got to make sure like, to not follow the arrows hair and, and get stabbed. Out of your face. But conveniently, you know, it was all just a straight line where they needed to go. And then when they got to the sp- uh, the pirate chips and everything, like he picks up a handful of cloves, smelled them, and he's like, "Oh, this is cloves." No, that shit should be dust. It's like 400 years old. It shouldn't even smell like cloves anymore. My fucking spices in the cabinet that have been sitting for three months don't even smell like cloves anymore. And you're going to tell me that the, like, no. I, just, yeah. And and also, like, you know, they're they're able to walk and stomp and yada, 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 and open doors and doors work and everything's fine. But, like, you, you, you shove somebody into that door frame one way and the whole door busts, like, mid-fight. Like, they were just, I felt like they were really selective about what worked as a prop and what didn't work as a prop, and I didn't like that. That's, and that's a big one with, like, a lot of, like, you'll see in, like, when they go into, like, old pirate ships. It's like, oh, yeah. you move this handle, the whole thing falls apart. But this door, it's staying shut exactly. for a while. Or, or, like, they're swinging on ropes that are hundreds of years old. First of all, you breathe on that wrong, it's going to disintegrate, but you're going to put your whole body weight on that and swing across 100 feet of water? No. A big example is the, the knife he had. He, like, that knife was working fine up until it somebody... It would have been dull as shit. That, yeah, but it, the knife was doing its job up until somebody just tapped it and the fucking whole blade fell off. It's like, oh, so now it's broken. Before it was fine, but now it's broken. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was definitely a little iffy when it came to the age of things and how well things work and how well they don't. I will give you guys that point. Um, but I was just so wrapped up in the fun of it. Oh that yeah, I didn't absolutely. Care. No, I'm not. I'm only now acknowledging these things now because she brought it up. Now I'm like, oh wait a minute. You're no, I right. was so preoccupied by that whole concept in my head because like, as, as I wanted to enjoy those scenes because then every time something happens, I'm like, no, it fucking didn't. No, it fucking didn't. That's a problem. That's a problem. Like I just I could not get out See, of that I was, mindset. I was just in love with like point. the fact that they're on pirate ships. I was like, oh, they're like flying pirates. This is fun. They're like the yeah. fucking dude, the cannon. Like that shit's yeah. been waterlogged for hundreds of years. You're really gonna tell me it like, wasn't well, waterlogged? Yeah, it wasn't in the water. Well, I'm sure the tides. No, it was. Yeah, I'm saying you've you've got the tides coming in. You've got hundreds of years of just moisture. The gunpowder is hundreds of years old. There's yeah, no way it's just hanging out tend dry. To, like, well, the gunpowder he used was locked. Was like sealed inside a leather pouch. So that. But there was other gunpowder in the cannon. Because no, no, he doesn't. He just pours the gunpowder. Yeah, he does pour the gunpowder. And then he, he cuts Theoretically, the, the gunpowder yeah. could be dry, but like uh, an uncared for uh, iron cannon and a cannon ball. Like the that cannon, cannon probably should have fucking exactly destroyed, destroyed itself. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not saying it's it a one use cool. cannon. <laughs> like, like aesthetically, cinematically, everything going on, fucking amazing. But like, I just I had so many problems here's, with what they did with that. Here's my thing, right? And every problem you have is a real criticism that if this were not an Uncharted movie, I would call this out on. However, as they played out on the pirate ship, nothing they did felt like it was out of place for a video game. Everything felt yeah. like it would have been in line with what Nathan Drake would have done if I was sitting at my couch with a PlayStation controller in my hand. So that was kind of like my... That's why I brought one to the movie theater. <laughs> yeah. The whole time he's clicking. Chris is just sitting there with like one of those portable gaming cases. You like open it up and your console's in the bottom. You got a little TV in the top. Chris is like the little brother where you give them the controller, but you don't actually plug it into the PlayStation. You're, you're playing you a boo. You're playing a boo. You're playing a boo in the Aladdin game. I am the youngest brother of three. Yeah, you definitely out. were handed unplugged in controllers all the time. No, that, I wasn't. My whole childhood was unplugged in controllers because my brother would play Resident Evil when I was like four years old and I wanted to smash zombies with him. <laughs> Resident Evil at four years old? <laughs> Gordon didn't play. Are you kidding me? No, you. Like, who shows a four-year-old Resident Evil? My brother. <laughs> you were a lot braver fact, than I. Was I was playing GTA three, I think, when I was young. Like, I was like nine. Anyway, same. I'm a pop up guy. But like, no- nothing Nathan Drake did in that movie felt out of place for an Uncharted video game. So as long as it felt within the confines of like this reality, I was okay with it. I mean, I I, I get your point. And if you're trying to make a realistic nonfiction movie, I would have problems with it. But I was like, eh, it's a video game movie. Speaking okay, but, of, but since we're since I'm already on the soapbox of shitting on this movie on various levels, I want to get on that soapbox next. One other small thing, they don't really take any time to acknowledge how seriously hurt they get throughout the movie, and that's like a gripe I have with action movies in general. It's like yeah. we already brought up John Wick, and John Wick wasn't perfect about it, but they did have a really good thing of like showing that John Wick had like you know broken ribs that he had to seal or like he actually got messed And that's up that's that's one of the praises that movie gets is that it is so good about showing uh the damage to John throughout the course of the film and how he deals with those injuries in the later fights. Um but like any any action movie is going to have that problem. Fucking Fast and Furious has that problem. Indiana Jones has that problem. Fast and Furious is a whole different beast of that problem. <laughs> Fast and Furious is a whole different beast of problems. But I will say but everybody to... in that movie should be dead yeah. by Flash. Um but I would say to to your point is that it is a video game movie you sit behind a rock and heal like that's how video Actually, games work that's a thing specific about uncharted because nathan drake does not have health he has luck really yes uh 
you don't actually get hit by the bullets until your luck runs out, at which point you instantly die. No shit. That's, that's how a yeah. cool fucking That's concept. how their health system works. It's the health system is luck in that the is, Uncharted games. That is awesome. It makes yeah. this movie way better, actually, because it makes sense then, because he keeps like just accidentally not dying. Like That's mm-hmm. a really cool concept. Because he's very lucky. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, again, like we said at the beginning which, of this podcast, we're going into this not having that background. But so knowing that makes me like this project. movie more, actually, because it really just shows like you, the motherfucker was just lucky this entire time. I don't that that's a I'm blown away by this idea actually as a video game in general. Like that's a that's, fucking that's awesome. like one of the fun facts I've known. I love how you're blown away by some video game that magic. was made like ten years ago. <laughs> nope. Try again. Twelve years ago? Nineteen. Nineteen years ago? Two thousand three was Uncharted no, One. Shit. Damn. Damn. It was a PS two title. It was no, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Fuck was off. It? No, it wasn't. Uncharted it was that PS3. Old also, I like I how this movie's 14 years in the making. It was the first making, PS3 title. title. I think it was an open launch PS3 <laughs> title. That's a very good point. Well, oh, that yeah, but um, still that, that that's awesome. I, and, but again, yeah, it goes back to the fact that like the, the, it's a video game movie. The motherfucker's gonna heal like whenever he's not being shot at. He's or... gonna in, eat an entire turkey and be fine. Exactly. So. That's been uh, sitting right. in a castle wall. The PS2 wall. launch title, right? You're right. 2007. Seven, but still. Like fifteen it's still, years, yeah, it's still an old ass fucking game that I didn't know about. This so that time. franchise was there for one year, and they decided we're gonna make a movie out of this. Oh, 100%. I mean, honestly, they, though, like, a lot of that's, them did though. Yeah, uh, oh, that was yeah. during the hype of like video game movies. Tomb Raider was only out for like a year before they greenlit a Tomb Raider movie. Yeah, a lot of those Fair movies play. like yeah. Like, popped Everybody up. wanted more titties. Did you see how big her titties were? Angelina Did you Jolie? see how many polygons no, no, they no. had? Like, like, Laura yeah. Croft. Yeah, her square ass titties. <laughs> they were they were pyramids. That's what it was. No, the pyramids. They had two whole polygons for those tits. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the, uh, the the big fight scene, uh, Marky Mark climbs up and takes over the helicopter. Tom Holland's down on the pirate ship, kicking ass, and it's it's a whole lot of like it's awesome fun action stuff that happens. It's a pirate battle, but in the air. It's yeah. Fucking aw- like you. There's ramming ships. There's cannons being shot. Like it's a pirate fight, but without wet. It's awesome. Yeah, and then it does, uh, and the Marky Mark has. I'm sorry, Sully. No, it's Marky Mark. <laughs> Sully has to like avoid the other ships, so he like dives up and then down, and the ship's like in the water for a second, and I was like, whoa, no way! <laughs> and then it gets out of the water very quickly, and I'm just like, okay, fine. And then at the end of the fight, the ship breaks free, and it's in the water floating, and I'm just like, no! And then it does like immediately sink and crumble, and I'm just like, okay. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I got mad for a second. I'm like, if you're going to let that thing stay above the water for yeah. longer than like 15 seconds, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> we're going to have a big also, problem. Also, in that whole fight scene, I told John on our way out of the theater, my favorite part of that was when they stopped every part of that action scene just for that one like one second clip of Todd Holland like swinging around and shooting at somebody just for the sake of like, this is my cool guy move. And I loved it. I'm not yeah. going to lie, I loved it. And then there was that scene where uh, he takes out a guy in the pirate ship and on his way out, he takes that guy's uh, side gun hold- holsters with the pistols in them, which is the Nathan Drake signature look. Yeah. He has those side holsters that he pulls guns from. That That's would one explain of the few... why they took that scene to do that. Then. Yeah, yes, because that, be that was that, that exact scene was directly fan service. That was like, here you go. Here's the Nathan Drake you wanted. Here you go. You, was, you like it? I was like, I recognize that. I assume again, it was one of the things where I was like, I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. why I, I saw it. and I was like, oh yeah. Also, I will say you mentioned that a year of Uncharted existed. By, by the way, Holland pockets some of the gold, and he and Sully seem to split it on their way out of the thing because the ships are lost. The Philippines are reclaiming all of that, and then uh, there's a scene immediately after the credits where. Um, they're trying to get some Nazi map, and uh, apparently the ring that his brother gave him in the beginning of the movie is important to the map. And on their way out, they get stopped by another bad guy that we don't see. So it's setting up a sequel very nicely. Mm-hmm. Also, his also, brother is seemingly alive in prison. We see a character... He's in the gulag. He's in a gulag. We see a character with long, disheveled hair. We don't see a face writing a postcard that just says, uh, be careful out there. They're watching you or whatever. Uh, watch your s- back. Watch your back. Signed, signed S, S, which is how Sam always signed his postcards. And it's addressed to Nate Drake in New York City. So that's setting up our sequel very nicely. However, I think I lost my point. Shit. Okay, I'll make my point. Let's all then. sit here quietly until Jeff figures it out. While you do that, I'm gonna hop on my soapbox. I was kind of miffed that like all the ruins in Barcelona, like among them was a nightclub, and they didn't find like any of the other ruins. So, <laughs> yeah, there were there were a lot of like smaller issues, like and then fucking they're in this cavern that you need special keys to get to, and you're walking around a certain way, and then you look up and there's just a grate 
to a sewer, and that's where yeah. Sully is. And I was like, mm. like they absolutely should have found this. Yeah, like it's it wasn't hidden at all. Like the nightclub, especially he literally. Or no, it was the pizza, the the Papa John's, where he literally walks in. And yeah. Oh, the key goes in that fucking hole that looks like a keyhole. <laughs> like, I mean, I love this Papa John's just has a fucking museum. Yeah, in the middle which of don't get me wrong. That Papa John's maybe that's joke, just Barcelona. <laughs> that, that, I, I, I don't. Mean, yeah. I, that this Papa movie John's brought joke, to you by Papa John's. I did like that joke. It was like I'm in a fucking Papa John's. I was like, that's funny. But yeah, he just walks up and it's just there. No, pick me up a slice. And then also, it was like it was plexiglass, and then suddenly regular. Pick me glass. up a slice. Hold well, the he racism. Shot it. He shot it and then became like regular. Is that how plexiglass? Isn't it plastic? I don't. I'm just confused. So it, 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 it's he not, shot I don't it, know it how it weakens it, and it, then it he threw the woman oh, into okay. it. He threw right. Joe Braddock into it, and then yeah. uh, humans kind of weigh a bit. Oh, okay, I guess. All right. Yeah, but but also there's like because I, I went to Spain also the bullets didn't hit younger. the fucking rock and destroy the oh, okay. My bad. I went to Spain when I was younger, and like there's so much raw history everywhere that like things just kind of organically build around it. Now I don't think there's gonna be like a glassed off thing like they had in fucking Papa John's of all things. But like, however, I think if they built a nightclub underground, it very well could be like a, I, that, that's adjacent my point. to I could the ruins. See something like that happening? Maybe not like directly covering shit up with fucking punk rock stickers, mm-hmm. like it's like a downtown Philly bar. But yeah, it, it absolutely could. But, but it's but not like, outside the realm of possibility. Exactly. And like the street shots that you see where it's like these these really old immaculate stone buildings that have just been turned into, you know, like corner shops. Like that that is a thing. Like that's yeah. just how that's things a have thing adapted. Everywhere. Like even like we were talking about downtown Philly, you you there's a, a CVS that's literally used to be a bank and there's a vault in the back of the CVS, a giant like vault door. So that happens all the time. And that shit's fucking cool. But like yeah, then it comes down to it's just I just think most of the stuff said, didn't didn't Philly tear down George Washington's house? Probably. We're fucking pieces of shit. Uh, I think that's something that happened. Moving on. Yeah. But um but yeah, overall though, it's like how did nobody figure this out? Like mm-hmm. it was it was too obvious to most people who are already looking for this thing that it's not already like right in your face. Like what mm-hmm. the fuck? Like you have the outside of the, the two keys making like the, the compass, most of it was figured out. And I was just kind of like, but no, what? <laughs> like, I mean, it makes sense in the context that we're presented, but a lot of people weren't even, first of all, most people didn't have the book that they had. So just to clarify Chris's point real quick, the house as it was doesn't really exist anymore, but like the window frames, the door frame, and a lot of the brick foundation and wall structure is still there. Oh, so and it's, it's the preserved. ship of the- Theseus. Pretty much. Uh, also, it's uh, the president's house, not Washington's house, because the original capital was in Philadelphia. Right. Until 1800. Uh, and the monument is commemorating the lives of nine enslaved Africans at the site of the nation's first executive mansion. So maybe the rebranding of the president's house into a slavery monument might have to do with part of it being torn down. Gotcha. I don't feel like reading the rest of it right now. That's fair. Philadelphia is not that bad. Yeah. We're, we're pretty bad. We did throw batteries at Santa Claus. You still own that. <laughs> Philadelphia owns that. Yeah, we're, we're too we proud absolutely of it. destroy that hitchhiking robot. Oh my god! I'm sorry, I, I forgot we're not, about we're that. We're not, we're not shitting <laughs> on Philly. Don't, this isn't don't. the show on Philly I know. podcast. No, that's that's the Jair bombs that I never do anymore. Anywho, mm-hmm. your point though, we think we're done. You did your point. Okay, yeah. is that your only point? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you're back to your thing. I had a point. I don't remember what it was. You still, I th- you had time to. You got distracted again with with the history of Washington. ADHD works in wonderful ways. Yeah. So the plot of the movie, we're at. We just we the just wrapped it up. Oh, we wrapped it up. Oh, good they job. They flew off into the sunset with the gold. And we talked about how the sequel set up with yep, the. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Apparently, by the way, that sequel set up with the Nazi map and the ring is like directly lifted from the plot of Uncharted Two. Yeah. So they really are just going right into it. It seems we'll like they're that. really just going to like pick the, up like some of the game's so, plot and like wrap around it. My only thing I would say, like, oh, and Sully the, always had a mustache in the games. That's why he brings it up. Yeah, yeah. that's why they pointed out. That's it, definitely Sully that, always that's had probably a another Does like he have reshoot the cat in the games. I don't think so. I think the, the cat, cat was. Uh, I like I feel the cat. Like I've been well, they to need that. to remake the games yeah, with the cat. The, cat. Yeah. <laughs> the whole like the whole remaster of the games is just him with the cat the entire. I don't know the games, but guys, let's get to work on the fan mod for the PS. Yes, just a cat. Put the cat in the games. Um, yeah, so overall, I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. I again, like my biggest, probably my my singular biggest gripe of the movie was the the C- overuse of CG. But again, it was also COVID restrictions, so I understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also your main gripe in almost every movie I ever watched with you. So. I hate overuse of CG. I, I think I think you hate CG in general. No, I like. I think CG. you much CG. prefer physical props and puppets and stuff like that as opposed to CG. And when you see CG. You immediately recognize it, and something in your brain just says, "I hate this." So I do, which isn't like I, I'm not shitting on you for that. Yeah, that's, I, I don't think I. Not all. I've seen some good CG. It's just when the CG when I see like CG, the band scene in uh, Return of the Jedi. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> oh my god, you should have heard him go off on now, that one. Now, now, oh, neat day. Anywho, <laughs> I recently watched through the original trilogy with my fiance for the first time, and John got very mad when Return I just, of the Jedi came. Very the overuse of CG, because and I get you no, know, he was he was so excited nope, to nope, use it. Nope, not the podcast. I know. Not nope, not the. You guys brought it up. I was just saying. Um, I was making is, a joke. So we shit on you in is, passing, and then move on with our lives. Yes, it was a drive-by shitting, and I can't respond apparently. <laughs> yes. Um, so the point is here that the movie overall was fun as not knowing the, the source material. I think that's what made it so enjoyable. I don't think I would enjoy this movie if I played the games just because I'd be so – just with a lot of the, the movies that come You'd out. You'd be very nitpicky. Exactly. A lot more and than I, we which, already are. Yeah. And, and I just – it's exhausting. And it's nice to just Save all that anger for when we go watch the Borderlands movie together. I'm already hating it. I already am. And uh, I'll have that anger when I go to see the Gears of War movie that was greenlit. There's a Gears of War movie? The Gears of War movie got greenlit in 2008, two years after the first game came out. Ah. It has been in development hell for 14 years. Oh, hey, just like this one. You better hope Uh it turns out as well as this one did. However, it's getting a lot more traction now in Hollywood, and uh, a couple of WWE stars turned actors have signed on to do roles. John Cena. Or not signed on. They volunteered to do roles. Dave Bautista has uh, volunteered to do Marcus, nothing official yet, and John Cena has said that he wants to do uh, Damon Baird. Okay. Which would be a huge, like, that'd be a perfect fit. Oh, yeah. And I think Lester Spite, who voices Cole, is still a hugely jacked human being, and he's still in, like, a prime age, so he could still come back as Cole. You have to cast that movie as, like, just the biggest boys. Like, Yeah, that's kind of the whole Yeah, point. like, you literally, it's like, it's like, I don't care how great of an actor you are. We're going to make you a better actor, but you are built, and we need that more than mm-hmm. that, because that's what the games are. They're, like, the most fucking bulky motherfuckers. You can't have a skinny dude there. It's like, that's isn't, not going to work. Isn't the story that they have, like, some super steroid? Yes, the cog injects them with some uh, uh, hormones. Oh, there's actually, like, it's not just, like, design thing if they actually make it yeah they're roi- they're roided up oh that's <laughs> humanity is nearing extinction so all of their soldiers and all the men they have left that are like of a fighting age they get injected with hormones to make them bigger and stronger to stand a chance against the locust invaders okay that's okay so back cool. to the task at hand any uh further criticism <laughs> any further points any further thank you dear to about thank you dear for filling in uh as d in this episode uh, i i have a question to post to all of you is this no. the best video no. game movie? That is a hell of a question. So it's too early to tell, especially financially. But as far as video game movies that I've watched... I it's my favorite. It's I think it's my favorite. I've seen Tomb Raider. I saw a lot of the Resident Evil movies. Uh, all of them are bottom of the barrel. Facts. Resident Evil 1 wasn't that bad. It was True. fun. It, it was, was fun. The last yeah. one I remember was I like mean, hell, that laser scene got brought into a game. Dude, yes, literally, yeah. Um, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City was okay, but it's not as good as this. Um, I think my previous, like, number one was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, Because that was just such a fun movie. This, I'm excited for the second This definitely tops Sonic. Definitely. And not in a dom sexual way either. And I, I think, <laughs> and again... It, it, the, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I said this top Sonic. And no, then, no, I heard you. <laughs> I want an explanation. In my head, I had that as a weird like sexual thing, because like topping somebody... I, uh, move on. Please okay. move on. Please move on. <laughs> okay. Um, my, so, like Sonic obviously up there, but I would say my... Detective Pikachu was also really good. Detect- again, and I, I brought it up before, like by far the best fucking like physical... Like, That's turning- CGI that you enjoy. No, that I do actually enjoy it that one. It was pretty good. Yeah, like, I know. I was being, yeah, se- I was being brought, genuine. They, they that's brought Pokemon where I actually, into the 3D world, and they didn't do it badly. Yeah, they did it great. They did exactly what Sonic almost didn't do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That um, weird humanoid yeah. Sonic um, that we almost got. Teeth. Teeth. So I, teeth. I get, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> why, why? Human teeth. <laughs> oh, gotta go fast. Um, <laughs> I Again, like part of it is, is, again, I don't know the source material, so I have nothing to nitpick. And it's so much more enjoyable to watch a movie like that. But here's the thing, right? And because you said that, this is exactly why Sony and PlayStation made this movie. Because right now, I'm going to go on Red's PlayStation. There's no fucking way I'm not buying Uncharted. I'm going to play their game. Yeah. And they, they like fucking know collection. that. They market they the shit out of They fucking yeah. know that. Because they sold so many games with this that's movie. That's what it comes down to is, is you... you you at worst, you just had a really expensive marketing campaign. You <laughs> sold you sold me on tickets because I went and saw your movie. I loved your movie, and now I'm buying your game. They are double dipping, and I'm not mad. Uh, Jeff, can you go to the PlayStation Store real quick and check and see if Uncharted Collection has its sale going on? That's a great question. Oh dear. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. I would like that's that's good. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, but then like I think back to like other video game movies that I've seen. 
and like outside of Sonic, I the Doom movie. The, I Mm-mm. I don't even remember it. The it was not great. Boring as fuck. Oh, God awful. Wouldn't have it. The Nathan Drake collection is currently half off. That's oh, fucking hilarious. So this is. Oh my God! This is the greatest hey, hey, marketing hey, hey, ploy. Hey, Sony. 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 This is for you. Sony, I see you. <laughs> yeah, Sony, I see you. I see exactly what you're doing. I'm not mad. As an Xbox fanboy to the day I die, I'm not even yeah, mad. Good, good job, Sony. Fucking props to you guys, for real. Holy shit, they play in the 4D chess, and I played right into their fucking hands. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to buy the game, so. Because I'm going to buy it, and there's only one PlayStation. Suck phony is what I'm saying. That's hey, a uh, weedest reference. Yeah, good job. I for you it. 90s mother kids. Yeah. Yeah. You one <laughs> of the 12 weedest fans in the world? Yeah. Still have motherfucker. <laughs> Flagpole Sitta still playing on your uh, not, Spotify? Not Weedus. Flagpole Sitta wasn't Weedus. Weedus was a senior jerk back. All right. I need you to understand something. Flagpole Sitta is one of my favorite songs of all time. That was by Harvey Danger. Honestly. Oh, excuse you me. You can't Fucking take that from us. You, you really can't. I swear to God. That was it for this episode of the <laughs> podcast. I would like to thank special guest uh, John Fitzwater for being here. Yo. Thanks for filling in when yeah. uh, the, the, the boys can't make I, it. I was and my fiance, D. Red. Thanks for being here, dear. I'm only here so I don't get fined. All right. I didn't know uh, I was marrying I Marshawn it. Lynch, but thank you very much. Uh, you I, you will probably wish you were. I, I would love to marry Marshawn Lynch. You certainly oh. have Dude, a lot more money to murder? offer you. I was going to say, just for the financial security alone. Yeah, Are honestly. you guys going to do Murderville? Because Murderville, I think, might be worth doing. Because uh, Marshawn Lynch and the Murderville. I don't think we can at this point, just because it's been a while. Yeah, and it's, it's just a, a whole bit, series. Yeah. But we, we discussed it, I think, briefly off, off air. But it, Murderville was very, very good. Chris, thanks for being here. Always happy to be here. Thanks for showing up and it doing your job. Uh, thank you, listeners. If you liked what you heard, uh, please leave us a kind review on your favorite podcasting platform. Remember to subscribe and like and whatever it is the uh, buttons are under the YouTube videos these days. And uh, if you have a movie or show that you'd like us to review, you can send that in to tbandjpodcast at gmail.com, which reminds me, I need to reset up the email on my phone since I had to reset it, and I don't have the login anymore, so I should get should on really that. get on that. Ah. Thank you all for listening. Bye. And if you made it this far, we're coming at you on Monday with the Peacemaker finale. Stay tuned for that. And we will have D and Troy for that. We, yeah. They've been apprehended. The police uh, uh, will, will conclude their investigation. <laughs>